Hi everyone, thank you for joining us today as we cover tips for finding a school within the U.S. Today, um, of course, I'm Brianna Davis from internationalstudent.com, and today we're joined with a very special guest. We have Caitlin Kelly from the University of Alabama. She is the Associate Director for International Recruitment and Admissions, and she's also lived and traveled in numerous places around the world. So we're very excited to have her here today. She's going to be covering a number of tips that will be helpful to you um, when trying to find a school within the U.S., so a college or a university. And if you've already started this process, then you know it's not quite as simple as what you might have originally thought it would be. It requires a lot of research and dedication, and there's a ton of schools throughout the U.S. So sometimes it can be difficult to really narrow down which ones are going to be best for you. So that's what we're going to cover today. We're going to give you some criteria as to what you can really look into to see which one would be the best fit for you and what you're in need of. So I'm going to go ahead and I'll hand it on over to her and Caitlin will get us started. So Caitlin, go ahead and get us started. Good morning. Yeah, so like she said, my name is Caitlin and I'm with the University of Alabama. Um, and there are a few different topics that I want to cover when we're talking about how to find or how to identify the right school, the right fit when you're looking at universities and colleges in the United States. Now, you may have heard this before, but there are over 4,000 colleges and universities in the United States. So that number alone might be a little intimidating, but we want to help you find the right one for you. Um, so today I want to talk about, first, academics, because I think that that's what you're there for, right, is that you want to study. That should be your main objective. But I also want to talk about the opportunities that the college can provide you. And then I do want to talk just a little bit about cost because we want to find the right fit for you and your family as well when it comes to pricing of, of a, the university and how to make that affordable for you and your family. So when we talk about academics, the first thing that should come to your mind is the programs, right? So there's so many different things that students study when they go to the university. And so some students when I go and talk to students all over the world talking about coming to the United States for, for programs, they know exactly what they want to study. And maybe you're one of those students. Um, and that's great. If you know exactly what you want to study, then I hope that you're looking at schools that offer that program, right? That's where you should begin, is does the school that you're looking at offer your program and what kind of opportunities does it offer within that major, right? So if you are someone who's interested in engineering, what kinds of engineering programs are, in, are available in that college? Or what kinds of mechanical engineering programs are available in that college? Or even more specifically, what kind of automotive engineering programs are in that college? So really drill down if you are a student who knows exactly what you want to study, right? But maybe you're a student who doesn't know exactly what you want to study. And that's okay too. I meet many students who don't know exactly. And so maybe you're a student who wants to have a university who can give you a little bit more flexibility. So there are many programs out there who um, have first year programs that offer a, a way to, to study lots of, different pro lots of different courses within your first year and then decide a little bit later. So maybe that's better for you so that you can take university courses across the board and start learning what your passions are before declaring a major, right? So find something that fits you. Or maybe you're a student who has more than one interest. So maybe you're a student who loves chemistry but also loves arts. So look for a school that has focuses in both of those programs. Um, and that's okay too. You'll find that in the United States there's a lot of flexibility in what you study and how you put it together. So one thing that I know that at the University of Alabama we have is something called New College where you can even create your own program. So if you are that student who loves chemistry and the arts, you can put that together and create your own degree program. So look for a stu uh, school that has flexibility or maybe you want to double major in those and take the full chemistry coursework plus the whole um, art coursework, yes? And so a double major or a major and a minor. So what kind of courses are available? But it, the academics is a lot more than just 
um, what your major, what your minor is going to be. It's also the opportunities within that major, within that program, that I think is important to look at. So what is the focus of the program, right? Um, will there be internship opportunities for you? Is it a hands-on learning environment? If it is a, um, a design program, if it's something like that, what does the studio time look like? What are the facilities like? Those types of things are important to decide as well. So make sure that you really dig in, ask questions, see if you can talk to the advisors, see if you can talk to the college, um, to get um, dig into the website as well, to try to get a feel for what it would be like to be a student at that campus. Um, something that I also want to mention is I'm specifically talking to those of you who right now who are looking at undergraduate programs, right? Um, if those, if there are any of you who are um, finished, in, finished already with a bachelor's or undergraduate degree and are looking at graduate programs, we can talk some of those questions later. But this is really for students who are, who are finishing high school right now and looking at undergraduate degrees. Um, another thing to say about academics is making sure that you are finding the school that is the right fit um, when it comes to size and when it comes to classroom size. There are some schools that are large schools with lots of students and, and might have some larger classrooms. And if you're a student who is ready for that kind of environment and really likes to dig in, that would be great for you, yes? And some students prefer a smaller classroom size where there's more one-on-one -on -one, um, work with the, with the professors, work with the um, advisors and so forth. And maybe that is the type of classroom environment that fits you best. And so knowing those things as well as you go into what kind of academic environment fits for you. I also want to talk about um, finding a campus that is the right academic challenge for you, knowing where you are academically, and finding one that fits your needs. Um, one thing is some of my students come in who need some extra English support. So if you are a student who has studied in a language other than English all through high school and needs some extra English support, finding a campus that has English support, whether that's a full intensive English program or some ESL classes as part of their academic support, um, finding that on your campus as well to make sure that you are ready to go into an English environment, which universities in the United States are, to do your undergraduate degree. And so those are all things to consider when choosing a university in the United States. So, so in addition to your studies, in addition to what you're doing inside of the classroom, university in the United States is a time when you're doing so much outside of the classroom as well. And we want it to be a time of growth and of leadership and of opportunities. So I see my students getting engaged in all sorts of different opportunities. And I think that that's just, it's as important as what they're learning inside of the classroom is some of these opportunities for leadership and engagement outside of the classroom as well. So what types of opportunities does a college offer for you is also important to, to, to look into. So maybe that is a club, maybe that is a sport, Maybe that is a chance to be a leader within the residence halls, or maybe that's an opportunity to, um, to go on a trip with your university. So all of those are different things that you want to research. If you have a hobby or a passion or a talent that is really important to you right now, we hope that you continue it as you get to the university because that's something that you've dedicated lots of time and effort and energy to and that you probably are, want to continue, right? But it's also a time where you can explore lots of new ideas. And so I love when I see my students come in who have never done something before, but they take advantage of one of the clubs on campus and say, well, I had never done Taekwondo before, but it was there and it was available and I wanted to try it, so I did. And now I do this every Tuesday night, right? And so there's lots of ways to get involved on campus and that's a great way to meet new friends and meet new people and create new skills and leadership. And so look for those types of opportunities as well as you hit the campus. 
So I would recommend, as you're looking for a school, look at what kinds of organizations they have available to students um, and see if there are any that are interesting to you. In addition to that, I would recommend looking at where is the school located. And that might seem interesting to you because you're thinking, well, I want to go to the United States, right? A lot of the students that I talk to, when they think of the United States, immediately think of the large cities in the United States. They think of New York City or they think of Los Angeles. There's a lot of the United States in between those two cities. Are you only interested in a large city or would you be interested in a smaller community as well? What types of opportunities would looking at all of those options provide you? Do you want to be nearer to things that would get you out into nature? Are you someone who loves to go mountain biking? Are you someone who loves to go to the beach? What kinds of opportunities would those give you on the weekends that maybe being in a large metropolis wouldn't? So what kinds of things do you want to fill your time with to keep you active, to keep you engaged when you're not in the classroom? Because this is your four years. And so we want to make sure that you have an active, engaged lifestyle outside of the campus as well. So what types of things are you going to be looking for? And location is part of that. The United States is a large country with lots of different climates, with lots of different things to do. So thinking about what that's going to mean for you and your, and your lifestyle, yes? And so we have some very cold parts, we have some warm parts, and what that can mean for you. Um, I also want to talk about, and one thing that I encourage you to ask when you're looking at a school, is what the international community is. No matter what country you're coming from, and what, um, where you're going to be in the United States, is where you're going is the university's students, who they have on their campus, and how they engage on the campus currently. Yes? And so the international students who are currently on the campus, what types of things are they involved in? What kind of student groups do they have? And um, how they are playing a part in the current community? And those are great questions to ask when you're, when you're applying to a school so that you can get a good feel of how you might fit in. So maybe you're a student from a country that you would love to meet other students from your country, or maybe you're trying to break away from that and be the only one from your country on that campus. Either of those are options but ask their questions so that you can find the fit that feels good to you. And so, then finally, I do want to mention cost. Cost is important, but I want you to keep in mind not only the total cost that you'll see on our printed materials and on our websites, but also the things that, that might come into play. So whenever you're talking to an admissions counselor, whether we're talking to you here, you're looking at our website, we, you see us at a fair, something like that, you will see a total cost. And that is something that we have to put out so that you know how much one year would cost at the university. Um, and that includes tuition, fees, room and board, um, all the things that it would include, right? Um, that is important for us to have a total cost available. But also know that there are some ways to, to lessen that cost, that some, student, that some schools will be able to offer scholarships. Um, often those are available based on merit, that, um, meaning things that you've done well. And so if you're a student who has earned high grades, maybe high test scores, that some uh, schools will be able to offer scholarships based on that. But ask the questions to know whether those scholarships are going to be one time only, maybe they're only available in your first year, or whether those scholarships are going to be available for each of the four years that you're attending that school. Um, also, some schools aren't, if it, um, aren't able to offer scholarships to first year students, but their departments, whether it's the engineering college, the um, College of Arts and Sciences, whether some of their departments are going to be able to offer some departmental scholarships later down the road. So maybe in your first year you aren't able to get a scholarship, but some of those departments have some scholarships for their, for their top students later. So those are all questions to ask about how to get a scholarship from the departments. Um, 
And then also it's always good to see if there are any outside scholarships that you are qualified for. Um, of course, all of the scholarships are going to be competitive, so make sure that you put together your packets well and always present the information that is asked. And so if a scholarship says that you need to meet certain criteria, make sure that you do before you apply. And if they say that they need certain test scores or they need a certain essay, um, submit the information that is asked for. And so those are the things that I want to talk about, just hitting on the academics, the different opportunities on a campus, and making sure that you're hitting, um, knowing what is all in, included in the cost. But really it comes down to if the, stu if the school feels like it's the right fit, if you've talked to the admissions counselor, if you've looked at the website several times, if you've read the brochures and it, and it feels like a place where you can send, where you can spend for four years, then that's what is, is the most important part. And so all of those things combined. So if you have more questions, please let me know and we'll chat soon. Thanks. All right, excellent. Thank you so much, Caitlin. Um, hopefully all of you viewers out there feel a little bit more um, well-informed and a little bit more equipped to actually um, start on the search process whenever it comes to finding the best U.S. college or university for you. Um, so we're going to go ahead and look into questions, but first, um, make sure that if you have a question that you would like us to answer today, that you utilize the chat feature within um, the Hangouts. So if you go into the chat feature, you can, um, the Q&A feature, then you can just ask us our questions and we'll read those and try to get to that today. We'll have Caitlin answer it for you. Um, if you are watching this after the Hangout or maybe you send it in too late, um, then keep in mind that she is, Caitlin is our guest advisor of the month. So we have her for the rest of February. You can visit internationalstudent.com, go to the guest advisor page, and she is our February guest advisor. So she can answer those questions for you um, until the end of February. I know it's um, we're about halfway through, but you still have a few days that you can ask her any of those questions. Also, um, we have a lot of you who have asked about scholarships. And I know, Caitlin, she touched on that, um, on you know, going to your school of um, the school of your interest and see what kind of scholarships they have available, but also outside scholarships. Um, if you go to internationalstudent.com, then we have a whole scholarship database as well. That's a good place to kind of consolidate your time when doing this research. Um, there's a number of different organizations that post to that. So that might be a good place to start your search is by going there. All right, so let's go ahead and we'll take a look at the other questions that have come in today, and Caitlin's going to answer those for you. All right, so our very first one. Let's see, we have, hello, I'm from Egypt. I want to know what school is preferable to study international relations and foreign policy. Excellent. Uh, thanks for your question. I think that there are wonderful schools for international relations and foreign policies. I don't want to list any right here. I think that that's um, good that you know what you want to study, and I think that that's where you should, should start your search. Um, as I mentioned, there's so many other factors that should go into your search as well about what types of things are also interesting to you with that opportunity, right? So if you're interested in international relations, foreign policy, those types of things, what other types of things are also interesting to you? So I think that you should first search for schools that have that major, and but I, th I guarantee that you're going to find so many schools that offer that program and can do it very well. I guarantee it, right? Um, so what other factors are important to you? Would you like to be in a small school environment, a large school environment, a large city, a small city, somewhere that is close to opportunities to be engaged in an in an in an international community might be important for that major. Um, and so those are types of considerations to take into as well. There's not going to be one school that does it best because there's going to be lots of schools that do international relations and foreign policy very well and can give you a great op um, education. All right, excellent, thank you. Let's take a look at another question that's come in. We have, how do two-year community colleges work? Do you recommend them? Yeah, that's a great question as well. So a two-year community college um, is a school that offers two years of education, and then those students, if they decide to move on, will transfer to a four-year university like the one that I work at. And so um, 
I think that for some students, it's a very good opportunity, but it's not for everyone. And so it's really a personal choice if that's something that you want to do. Students can start at a um, community college and um, finish some of their required coursework that will then transfer into a four-year university. It depends a little bit on what you want to study of what of that coursework will will transfer on, if it's specialized or not, um, but most of the time it does transfer. Um, also, sometimes, but not always, community colleges have slightly cheaper prices, so you might want to look at that as well. Um, and so those are some of the, the reasons why students might start a community, community college, but you have to understand that they don't offer the full range of courses as a four-year institution may. All right, perfect. All right, so let's take a look. We have a few other questions here. So we have a question that's asking, um, let's see. Oh, hang on just a second here. All right, so we have an individual who is pursuing a three-year Bachelor of Science um, degree, and they want to know if they would be able to find a master's program here in the U.S. that would accept a three-year um, BS degree. That is very individualized, and I highly recommend that you contact each of the schools that you are applying to. All right, perfect. Okay, we have hello. I'd like to know more about um, the process of transferring to university. Um, what's the process, and does it only apply to certain universities and majors? So if someone wants to transfer schools, is, is that possible, and what's the process like? Yeah, and so you can you can transfer. Most schools, depending on where you're transferring from, whether it's outside of the country or if you're studying in the United States already, in either case they're going to look at what you've already studied and what you have yet to complete and they're going to look at that to decide what of your credits can come in um, as full credit and what you need yet to, to complete. So I, have, I recommend again to contact the schools that you're looking at applying to to see what they need from you. Um, if you have completed a certain number of degree of credits already, then they will look at that. If you have not completed um, very many credits already, they may also need to still look at your high school transcripts as well. All right, perfect. So it looks like we have um, one last question. So please, if you have not sent in your questions, make sure that you send those in now through the chat feature, and we'll go ahead and get those answered for you. Um, and we will take a look at the, um, the remaining one that we have as of now. All right, so we have, um, for me, cost is a very big concern. And they'd like to know if you're able to give them in any information whenever it comes to US universities compared to other universities around the world, um, especially when it comes to finances. I think that's a good question. There are, I mean, as you look at the U.S. compared to other nations, um, there are some nations that are definitely going to be cheaper than the United States. There are some nations that are going to be more expensive than the United States. It's really a, a matter of personal choice of where you want to study, of what kind of education you want, um, and what that go is going to mean for you and your, fu and your future, and the degree that you're going to obtain. Um, also knowing that it is going to come down to what languages you speak and what languages you're willing to learn. That clearly in the United States we speak uh, English at the universities and so that that is going to be part of your decision as well. If you are an English speaker or have taken English that that might play a part in where you can go to universities. There are universities around the world where that is not the language spoken or where the classes are taught in so that might play part of your decision, um, but if you speak other languages, you might look at schools in other countries as well um, and what that might mean for higher education for you. All right, excellent. Well, that um, concludes our Q&A session. It looks like those were all the questions that we had come in, um, with the exception of we had a few more that rolled in um, regarding scholarships. Um, if you missed our previous discussion on scholarships, keep in mind there's a few good places to look. You'll want to contact the school um, that you're interested in, see what kind of scholarships they have to offer you or if they can direct you somewhere to go. Um, also, we have a huge data um, base, a whole list of scholarships on internationalstudent.com, um, and that's a good place to start your search as well for outside scholarships. 
All right. So thank you so much, Caitlin, for joining us. Um, you gave us such great information. Hopefully all of you out there watching um, feel more prepared to start the journey of finding a school in the U.S. And hopefully you all watch our future hangouts. Thank you so much. Thank you.